And welcome back to another episode of the Brett Snodgrass Podcast. I'm with a good friend of mine. Just actually met him, but I already know he's going to be a good friend. Bobby Albert on today's podcast. I'm really excited about this interview, guys. He's the CEO of Values Driven Leadership, LLC. And uh, before I introduce him, make sure you go to the YouTube channel, the Brett Snodgrass YouTube channel, and subscribe. Leave a comment. And uh, I love just to kind of interact with you and everything that you want to hear and everything that you want to do love to just support and encourage you guys. So make sure you do that. And Bobby Albert, how you doing, man? Hey, good morning. It's been a beautiful morning already. So that's, that's right, man. I, I know we had a, I feel like I already know you and we have, we're, uh, you know, from the same cloth and, um, a Christian man, Christian, Christian, a businessman, and you're leading other Christian men. And that's awesome. And thank you so much for being on the podcast today. And if you guys haven't heard of Bobby Albert, Bobby Albert is a CEO of Values Driven Leadership. Uh, he's passionate about helping other leaders build inspiring workplace cultures through values driven leadership. He's a writer. He's already written three books. He speaks. He's a consultant with other key leaders. And he shares the principles and practices that he's used to grow his own companies in the past from a modest beginning to highly successful leaders in their industries. He's a serial entrepreneur. Like I said, he's bought, sold, led. He's grew several successful businesses in his lifetime. Uh, he's learned most of his principles through the School of Hard Knocks. So love that. Uh, his One of his books that uh, I'm reading is True North Business, A Leader's Guide to Extraordinary Growth and Impact. So Bobby Albert, um, I know there's a lot more details to your life, and, and I was reading about you. Uh, I, I love your journey, and I know you come from an entrepreneurial family. Your dad was an entrepreneur. He started a business back in the 1930s. Uh, so why don't you kind of kick us off, man, uh, there, and what was it like growing up in the entrepreneurial family, and, and tell us about how you became an entrepreneur. Uh, boy, I'd love to, uh, Britt, uh, and uh, it's such a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, uh, my father started a furniture, upholstery, and refinishing business in 1938. Uh, in the late 50s, uh, you know, uh, him listening to his customers, uh, he started a moving and storage business. Now, back then, uh, we, we, you know, we didn't have retail stores like we know, you know, furniture retail stores like we know that's almost on every corner uh, that we know today. So back then, most people would have their total home or most of the furniture in their home uh, completely reupholstered and refinished. And it so happened that many of them were moving. And so they would started asking my dad, would you mind moving us? So that's how he started uh, this uh, uh, moving and storage business. Um, when I was uh, a little boy, I, I was very fortunate to, to hang out with my dad. I, I, I know a lot of people don't have that, that opportunity, but I did. And uh, I mean, uh, I knew who the bankers were, who took care of insurance, uh, who did the repair on the trucks. And, and, and back then we had full service gasoline stations, mm -hmm. if you can imagine that. And, uh, and so I knew the people that put the gasoline in the trucks even. And um, I, so I was exposed uh, often with how my dad interacted with people and how he really took care of customers uh, and how he dealt with his employees. Uh, so uh, it was a great opportunity for me. And if I might share this story, I remember uh, when I was a little boy, I was always wanting, you know, I was not only had the opportunity, but I really wanted to be around my dad. And uh, I remember at a warehouse, uh, they were, you know, like uh, people would bring in uh, household goods for storage. And um, I, 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 I was just dying to do something. And so they, the employees at the time, just to get me out of their hair, because I, I was a kid with full curiosity. And you would have probably said I was a d d d d d d d you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was all over the place. 
Uh, but they finally gave me my first job, and that was to fold the moving van pads, and some people call them blankets. Uh, now, you got to get this. I'm embarrassed to tell you, but back then, they never cleaned those pads. Mm. They were always filthy, dirty, and no one wanted to fold the pads. But I thought, man, I went to heaven because I got something to do here. And so they started calling me the automatic pad folder. So, uh, but when I was 12 years old, my dad finally let me uh, go out on my first moving job. And, uh, but he gave me some wise advice right before I went out. He said, uh, now, Bobby, when you go out there, I don't want you to act like the boss's son. Hmm. Now, I don't know how to tell you a 12 year old, uh, I, I understood what he meant by it. So when I went out on that first job that took me all the way through when I worked on the trucks, uh, <clears throat> uh, even through college, because I went to the local university, is uh, I always did the, the, the work, the jobs that no one wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would run between the truck and the house and the house and the truck. Uh, uh, I, I was constantly asking the crew leader, you know, is there something else I can do for you? And uh, I, I uh, <clears throat> in, in fact, they, they would chuckle because back then, of course, most of the workers smoked, so they take a smoking break. Well, I didn't smoke, but I would chew gum. And so... Uh, they started calling it a chewing gum break. And because um, <laughs> you're like uh, 12, right? <laughs> yeah, I was 12. And uh, the other thing I would always, I, 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 you know, every time they, I would take one break to their two breaks. Mm. So I, it, I learned at a very early age how to be a servant leader. Mm. And uh, I didn't, I, I'd be honest with you, I didn't understand it until later on the impact that one that one wise advice that my dad gave me how it 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 really had an impact on uh how i led the company later on mm. no i love that i mean just those words uh, don't act like the boss's son and to you at that age like what is that what did you think your dad really meant uh was it just don't um you know, that I gave you this job because you are my son, act like you belong here? You know, I think so. And I think that uh, he had seen happen or he's had other business entrepreneurs that, you know, talk about their son that kind of came into the business and thing that they just kind of prop up their feet and, you know, in a yeah. prideful way is like, uh, uh, hey, I'm the son and uh, you need to do this and you need to, you know, instead of yeah. going out there and bossing people, uh, what you should do. Uh, I, I was just uh, very open to, you know, just uh, be available and to listen. Yeah. yeah. And I tell you what, uh, those few employees that I worked side by side for many years, they taught me a lot about the business hmm. no, and that's, that's so interesting and i love when you said that uh, you always did the jobs that no one else wanted to do and i think that that probably taught you this servant leadership because that's what the leader does he's he's always out there he does the things that other people aren't willing to do and especially at the beginning i mean we got to do everything that no one else is willing to do and that's why we can can uh, move forward and are successful so uh, I'm sure that was just, did that carry on in your life when you were, and we'll get to kind of taking over your, the business in itself, but does, has that carried over time and time again? Are you still that way? Like, Hey, I, I'm willing to do the things that, that no one else will do. I'm not going to be prideful. Yeah. It, that's <laughs> the reason why I don't have to work nowadays because, you know, I sold my company to a publicly uh, traded company and I'm well taken care of, but it's just my, I'm, I, I tell people I'm living my second half of life mm. and I'm here to, you know, to make a difference in people for people and through people. And 
I, I, you know, until the Lord takes me home, that's what I'm going to do. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, take us into kind of the next chapter. So obviously you grew up, you loved hanging out with your dad. He was an entrepreneurial man. And, and I loved, he owned a kind of a furniture storage business. I'm sure the storage business back then was a lot different than it is today, (laughs) right? Public, (laughs) public storage. And it's crazy, but, uh, but but something happened in your life when you're about 20 years old and take us into that journey. Well, uh, it, it was a, uh, a true experience when, when I was 20 years old, uh, is life was really good. I, I had just graduated from our local university. I became engaged to marry my wife. So life was very, very good. I, I was able to graduate, you know, I, in fact, you know, mentioned about me uh, having being ADDDD. My parents, I think, to get out uh, when I, they started me in kindergarten when I was four years old. So mm. I graduated when I was 17 and I was able to finish college in three years. So life wow. was really good, really good. And uh, but there's one evening I will never forget. Uh, I was playing foosball with my college buddies when a friend came up to me and said, Bobby, your dad is in the emergency room. He's had a heart attack. Mm. And so we rushed to the hospital and upon seeing me, my mom quickly got up as our family doctor was walking uh, toward us. And he drew in a deep breath and said, I couldn't save him. Mm. And my mom and I were absolutely stunned. And in an instant, I became the leader of our small five employee business. Soon I discovered we were heavy in debt. And all the debt was, you know, I'm sure people would, you know, that's uh, in your business. uh, It was all short term, Mm. which was meaning it was all due less than a year. And this is the other hard part. Our debt was about the same as our total gross revenue. Wow. Not good. I mean, we were financially way upside down. And uh, I mean, I was in crisis mode every day, much like what we have been all experiencing, you know, during these challenging health and economic times, along with, you know, the hurt and unrest that's going on in our country. However, we survived, then thrive and ultimately grew to over 150 employees. Mm. And we, our our business was basically 99% of it was nationwide. We even did international work. And, um, uh, I mean, you know, that most of that business, uh, was like relocating people from, you know, like California to Illinois, from Florida to Virginia, from the state of Washington and the state of Connecticut. Uh, that was 99% of our business, but through the tough times, I've learned that everyone can build a successful life business, uh, and, um, uh, by applying uh, some simple principles and practices. Uh, I, I, I noticed in reading a little bit about you, about your, you mentioned that you're a simple guy. Well, I tell people that, hey, I'm from Texas. I'm a simple, I have a simple mind. I'm just a simple, <laughs> I have a, you know, I'm a simple man with a simple mind, you That's know, right. so. No, I love that. I, I I always talk about my company is actually called Simple Wholesaling, and it's because I we wholesale, we buy and sell real estate, and uh, I've always been in the mindset just keep it simple, and especially in real estate, there's so many different things that you can do, and I'm just I just I know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna block everything else out and just keep keep moving one foot in front of the other. So um so that's awesome. So. <laughs> You, you inherited this business at 20 years old. Was there ever a thought in your mind that uh, with your family, like maybe we should uh, sell the business, get out of the business, shut it, shut it down? Uh, I yeah. mean, as 20 year old kid, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you probably had no idea how to do all this stuff, right? <laughs> well, you know, fortunately, my dad, uh, while I was going through college, not only did I work on the trucks, but mm-hmm. he had me come in and prepare all the on a Saturday morning and prepare all the 
the paperwork for the jobs for the week coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I knew about that. I never did do any, I did some of the bookkeeping, but I didn't do the payroll. He did that. But there was a couple of things that occurred is once we discovered about our debt and our revenue situation, uh, back then, I don't know why, but my dad had three bankers. And uh, I mean, the bankers are sitting there saying, look, we're right, you know, here we got a 20 year old kid. Uh, and uh, we're, we're, you know, we got a lot of debt with this kid. Are we betting yeah, on him? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, he owes us money. Yeah. And what are we going to do about it? You know, so uh, two of them wanted to shut me down. Mm. But fortunately, one of them wanted to give me a chance. Mm hmm. And uh, somehow that one convinced the other two to give me a chance. Mm. And uh, uh, I, you know, with a lot of people helping me within one year, uh, <clears throat> we grew our revenue by 252%. Wow. And we had the highest profit in the history of the company. Mm. And that helped put in motion for the banks to finally, because they wouldn't loan me any more money. Mm -hmm. So I had to just work out a cash flow. And I mean, that's the reason why I was in crisis mode every day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there's a couple other lessons, if I might share. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, you know, I was talking about that uh, taking on when I was 12 years old. I, I, uh, one of the things I was faced with those five employees, uh, pretty quickly is I needed to ask them to, to take a pay cut. Mm. Wow. Now, can you imagine today at going to your employees and say, I, I need your help to take a pay cut? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and you're your a kid coming in and some of these employees, they're probably older, <clears throat> older people, right? Well, they were, you know, they definitely were yeah. older than me, <laughs> right. but many of them have worked side by side. So they knew yeah. of my character quality. They knew the kind of person I was. And uh, I think I had a lot of respect for my dad. Uh, they, uh, and, and they also knew me because of me working so close with them mm -hmm. uh, over the years that, uh, the, I, it, it really surprised me. I mean, I, I, well, let me say this. It was so scary for me. I mean, my body was shaking, my yeah. lips were shaking. I mean, I'm thinking I'm, tw you know, here I'm 20 years old and I'm having to ask something that people, you know, that's going to impact their life, you know, yeah. uh, is, uh, I got a hundred percent acceptance. Wow. I mean, when I look back on it, I mean, at the time I was so relieved, but I, when I look back on it, I just can't hardly believe it even happened. Yeah. And, uh, also back then I, to get some of the debt down, I sold my car, mm -hmm. my personal car. Uh, and, uh, one of the guys, uh, my, my dad furnished, uh, to, uh, two of the employees, a, a company vehicle. And I was thinking, man, I can't take away those vehicles. I just asked them to, you know, take a pay cut. And my dad was the one that gave those to them for use. Mm -hmm. But one of them drove by my house back and forth from work every day. And so I asked that, uh, that guy, if he mind picking me up in the mornings and taking me back home in the evening. And you know what? He did that for two years. Wow. Wow. And, and I, I mean, again, I'm trying to think, I, I just can't hardly, when I look back, it's just almost, I, I just can't hardly imagine that. But, yeah. but those were some um, interesting times that uh, taught me to just never give up, mm. you know, never give up and um it kind of fits my my abundance mindset anyway mm -hmm. yeah uh, 
I mean, I just think those lessons, again, it goes back to the lesson that your dad uh, taught you is about make sure you're doing the things that no one else will do. I mean, you know, just to walking in and asking anybody, whether you're 20 years old or 50, 60 years old, that's a hard thing to do, right? And to get 100% acceptance is another just astonishing thing. And then to sell your car, and again, I just, the word I keep coming back with is humility and the humbleness, right? I mean, you're the leader of this company now, even though you're young, but you don't even have a car. You're some, one of the other guys is taking you to work. And, it, and then your employees, it sounds like the culture, and I know we're going to really dive into that. I'm going to be transitioning to that. The culture that your dad put, that you had helped put, was a culture of humility because even their humbleness to take that pay cut uh, was is just amazing. And then it wasn't really about the money, which typically right now, you know, in the modern world, it's sometimes it is about the money, but it wasn't about that. It was about maybe the loyalty, right, that you talked about and, and that culture that you guys built. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, I. I, 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 I tell you what, it's just amazing to me how uh, the Lord kind of took me through all of that. And, uh, but to uh, be honest with you, I wasn't giving the Lord credit back yeah, then, yeah, but. Right. Uh, uh, well, take us through. So, and you kind of built this business. You guys started doing a successful in 2011. You ended up selling that business. You built it up to 150 employees and you sold it to a publicly traded company. Uh, so take, talk, talk to us about that. Like, so you sell this big company, you're real, now you're really successful. And now you've been going to work all these years. And then what, what happened then? Like, what was your life like? Well, uh, an offer came out of the blue. I wasn't plan. you know, I, Hey, I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, I'm thinking about the next journey, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah. I mean the next, how to grow this business. And I was, we were, my, uh, with the help of our leadership team, we were, had some pretty major plans. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, I, I, but out of the blue, this offer came from, uh, from the, actually from the public traded company, we, we had done business with them. Uh, so they had similar values as mine, uh, core values. And, and so, uh, at first I, I thought, well, I'm, 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 this is not where I'm going. You know, I'm going hard yeah. to this other way. And so it, it actually took us 11 months to negotiate the, uh, the sale agreement, mm -hmm. which I, I, I don't know, but, uh, it, it just seemed like it, it took a long time. <laughs> that is a long time to negotiate anything. So. So you finally got uh, it done. I mean, what what was it that put you over the edge? Was it just the amount? Was it, um, I don't know. I mean, did someone else encourage you and, and help you through this? Well, that's a that's a very good question. I I, uh, I had a, a certain number in, in my mind, and uh, it, it took them a long time uh, to come around to that number. Because, mm -hmm. see, I'm thinking about, our future growth, but I couldn't share it with them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, cause it, I, I know it was a challenging for me to communicate the value that I was looking for when I could see, you know, the opportunity, but let me just say this <clears throat> as the owner of the business, I think one thing that helped me, uh, a few years before when I was laying out this vision for where we were going with our company, is that I knew I couldn't finance it on my own mm. and that I was going to have to pull in, uh, uh, in outside investors. And, um, I think when I finally crossed that hurdle, it, I think it opened up my heart and mind to be open to someone else, uh, owning the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that was one thing that helped. Plus I knew these people, they were all this publicly traded company, the whole executive staff were Christians that helped me. And, um, I, I, they had lots of money that they could make sure that I, I was looking at that, you know, possibly they're the investor 
to take this business to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. It sounds like it was a really good move uh, for you. What was it like? And you can maybe keep this one short, but what was it like after you sold the business? What was that next year like for you? Well, a uh, part of uh, the sale agreement is that I stayed on to, okay. as the CEO of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, it it uh, And that worked well. But one thing that uh, the guy that I reported to, who was, I mean, this guy was really smart mm -hmm. and um, uh, he was, you know, way up in the organization and, um, you know, me being an entrepreneur, uh, he, he, he really uh, wasn't interested in, in where I was wanting to take the company, mm -hmm. even though they had the financial ability uh, to do it. And uh, see, he had more of a, what I call a manager's mindset to manage things. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a leader. I lead people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wasn't necessarily a visionary in any way. Uh, he was just more of making the business run more efficient. And I'm trying to think about making it more effective. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, uh, it was like I, I mean, he was always respectful, kindful with me, you know, uh, but he, uh, it, it's, uh, it was like, I, I, I wasn't, I, this entrepreneur spirit in me was, it was like, he was taking it away from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not one. So you to basically just, And he turned in kind of as the visionary, this, the, you know, the leader, and now you are an employee pretty much, right? As a CEO. That's basically what it was. Yeah. And, and all he was interested in is me just running the business better. Well, yeah. I'm not, that's just not me. Yeah. So how did, how long did that last? How long did you work for the company? It lasted for, uh, for about three years. Okay. So were you like not happy during those three years? Were you like, man, I need to, I need to get well, do something else. Uh, for the first two years, uh, I, I kept thinking, Hey, this is this abundant mindset I have. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, you know, I'll try this way to persuade him. Mm -hmm. uh, I even got him to agree to bring in, you know, one of the other executives uh, to hear what I had to say. Um, and uh, somebody I knew that had a little, you know, more of an entrepreneur spirit about him. Uh, and, um, but it, it just never did go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I struggled after I finally figured this, just, this dog's not going to hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I finally, uh, it, it took me a long time because I'm trying to think this is not me. It's not me. Our COO at the time, uh, he and I became very close, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, over the years and, um, and, uh, I, I, I told him first that mm -hmm. I think, uh, this is not for me anymore, mm -hmm. yeah. but in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, the Lord wants me to go down another path. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I don't know what that path is, Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's like, Bobby, I've been preparing you to go down this other path. And I finally came to that conclusion. And that's when I shared this with the COO, who was a real strong Christian man. And uh, I mean, he and I were like a, a tag team, mm -hmm. you know, with not only employees, but even when we go visit customers or suppliers and, uh, and we didn't worry about who got credit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I love that. It's awesome. And, Again, this is that and, culture. Yeah. And this guy, man, see, he had a, he was more, he was a very, he was much stronger on managing the things of the business. Mm -hmm. And I was, of course, my strength was leading the people and that combination, uh, man, we were a powerful team. And, uh, this guy, I never seen anybody that could spin so many plates. <laughs> well, awesome. So, 
let's just kind of move forward after that then. So you kind of came to that realization that, that you wanted something else, that God had something else in store for you. What was that? I know then, you know, reading about you, you had started other businesses, you had bought other businesses. Is that when this whole kind of serial entrepreneur came out of you? Well, uh, you know, it really kind of developed over years, but, uh, you know, for at that time, probably for over 20 years, people have invited, you know, wanted me to come and speak at their company or the, uh, the different trade associations, uh, which one of them I served on the national, uh, board of directors, but they kept asking me to come and do a workshop on a, my leadership style and, and culture. It just, and, and so, uh, when I decided to move on into this second half of life, uh, that's where my focus, you know, became is to use my, what, you know, the things that happened in our company, because we had uh, extraordinary profits. And if the industry, uh, which is a not a glamorous industry, you know, uh, if the industry really, really knew how much revenue we had and how profitable we were compared to some of the bigger players mm -hmm. in, in the market, uh, they would be total shock. Mm -hmm. Wow. They'd be, I, and so I, my company ended up being a case study to lead me in writing, publishing these books. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I think this is a good transition just to talk about that. So now, Bobby, you are the CEO of Values Driven Leadership, and and you're a coach, consultant. Uh, you speak, and you've written three books. Uh, the book that I wanted to talk about is True North Business, A Leader's Guide to Extraordinary Growth and Impact. So kind of what led you to read, uh, write this book, number one, and I really want to talk about, so obviously you know your experience in the marketplace as a business owner, but you've also been able to kind of come alongside other business owners and you kind of probably, I don't know, is there a common theme and is that why you wrote this book? And um, what it, what is like, what are the, some of the details of this true North business and uh, why does it mean so much to you? Well, uh, is the word true North, it's kind of like a, you know, like a hiker, that goes, you know, on a hike, they, they have a plan. And, uh, because if they don't have a plan, you know, using a compass, uh, they won't get back to the campsite. Mm -hmm. The compass, you know, was, is always pointing, you know, true North. And that's how they navigate back to, you know, campus with a plan. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I kept, uh, I kept hearing from, you know, from business, uh, leaders that they're not sure where they're going, or they would say things like, uh, Bobby, I want you to come in and fix my people. And, uh, the truth is, and this is what I have to it very delicately, uh, show them to look in the mirror and, that they're the ones that need to be fixed, mm. <laughs> but it requires a new way of thinking. And, um, uh, there is a, a big chunk of that true North business book. Uh, we had this, it was called on and in part of our culture is we actually had a physical button and we even had t-shirts that had the words on and in. Mm -hmm. Now, our people clearly understood what that meant. I mean, we were even ways of teaching frontline people how to work on the business while they're working in the business. Mm. And that was the point about uh, uh, teaching uh, leaders is how do you do that? How do you work on the business while you're working in the business? Because what I found is 80, this is amazing, 85% are up to 90% of, of business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs are working in the business as hard as they can go every day. 
It's just the tactical action steps, mm-hmm. bang, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. but their, but their life is not fulfilled. It, it, it's lacks meaning and purpose. And, um, so I, you know, that's the reason why I want to become, come beside, you know, uh, Christian business leaders, uh, is my, is my main audience is to help them learn how to work on the business. And it starts with to, you know, to grow you, then you grow your people, then you can grow your business. But most of them are focused on, I got to go to work every day to grow my business. Mm -hmm. I need results. And their employees are constantly hearing, give me more money, give me more money. Now he's not, he or she are not saying that, but that's what they hear Mm -hmm. is uh, I, and I, one of the things that's kind of a, a change in a mindset is uh, I finally, for myself, I learned this part of the school of hard knocks is instead of focusing on results, I focus, I learn how to focus on the people that gave me results. Hmm. And I, I went to, this is part of our culture. I went to great lengths. This ties back to the servant leadership. I went to great lengths to develop our people on who they were becoming Uh, because I learned that it was like me being able to multiply myself, Mm -hmm. not just by addition, but to multiply myself through our people. And the people gave me the results I was always looking for that I struggled Mm -hmm. for years to look for. Wow. That's the reason why we were so our rep see between 2005 and 2011. And you know what the economy was doing in late 07, 08, 09, 2010. I mean, it was in the tank. Yeah. And you know, you being in the real estate business that you might've been impacted and you might've had other people that were being impacted. But even at that, during that time period, our revenue grew, uh, over 500% and our profits grew over 500%. Wow. That's amazing. And and I, I contributed a lot had to do with our culture. And, uh, so that's, uh, I may have gave you more than you were looking for there, but, uh, no, that's really good. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, that that's awesome. And I, again, I think, way we kind of started this out, I think you are a big uh, people person and you talk about teams and kind of one of your tags lines is empowering teams. You help leaders build empowered teams. Uh, I think that's on your website. And so that, that's kind of like the mindset shift, but it starts with the leader. Um, like, what do you think it is about leaders that, um, why do they have a problem with, with that, uh, about looking in the <laughs> mirror and starting there? Like they always think it's something, an exterior thing that they need to fix. What, what do you think that is? Well, it, it's, um, uh, it's almost goes back to, you know, talking about being the boss's son. Mm-hmm. It's like, if I behave like a boss's son, it's like, Hey, I'm the boss's son. I'm in charge. I'll tell you what to do, even though I don't know what to do around here. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, and uh, I find so many of leaders uh, is they want to go to their employees and tell, 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 Mm -hmm. rather than ask questions and listen. We even have another physical button called AQL. That's ask questions and listen. And so, uh, if I can tie back to, back to this servant leadership, this is kind of part of our culture. This goes even way back in, it started out in the, um, uh, I'd say about the mid eighties that, you know, our company, like other companies, and we still had one, like the traditional organization chart, you know, it had me at the top and leadership team and all, you know, supervisor and so forth, uh, which you have to have for people to understand roles and responsibilities. Uh, but, but if you think about their traditional organization chart, it tells all the employees you're here to serve who 
the, the guy at the, the top. top. Yeah. But what I did, I took that organization chart and turned it upside down. Mm. And I put me at the bottom and I took on the role. It, it was my responsibility to serve and develop and equip the leadership team. It was their role to serve and equip and develop, you know, supervisors all the way up to the top of the organization. I love that. And, and at the very top, but, you know, beyond the frontline people was the customer. Because we, you know, like in your business, unless we are serving the customer, we're, we're not going to last very long. Mm -hmm. But I even above that uh, put Jesus Christ at the top of that. I was just thinking about that because obviously he quotes all the time that, uh, you know, there's multiple times in the Bible where he talks about that uh, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And I think you kind of did that right in your organization. Yeah, the, uh, there's a foundation verse, if I might share, mm -hmm. uh, that was part of our company. Uh, I brought it in and our employees heard me cover this. I mean, we shut down our company at least four times a year. Three of them were state of the company ad address, you know, like where we've been, where we are now, where we're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, But there was one, we would shut down the company for a whole half a day. And th this sounds expensive and it was, but we would, we would, uh, bring out a theme, uh, for that, for the upcoming year. Um, uh, uh, but the, the key verse, uh, that was foundational, uh, going back to 92, actually it, it, it's, uh, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And, and what it says, it says, whatever you do. Now, to me, when it says whatever you do, it means exactly whatever you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's at work or with your family or at church or out on the soccer field or you're at the convenience store uh, or walking through you know, Target or Walmart or, you know, or Costco, what, you know, wherever you live, it's whatever you do, mm -hmm. work at it with all of your heart. And my, our employees heard me say that excellence is not a sometime thing. It's an all time thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it goes on to say as working for the Lord, uh, our, uh, employees, knew that when they came to work every day, because they heard me say this, that you came to work for a higher purpose other than coming to, uh, to work for Bobby Albert. And it goes on to say, not for men, since you know that uh, you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. And this next one is a key verse. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Mm. So in other words, this is a reason why we had this upside down organization chart is that at the top was Jesus Christ. Cause when they came to work every day, they came to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, not Bobby Albert. Mm -hmm. And I think when I, you know, when I sold a company, if you came around and just talk to employees, just walking around and talk, mm -hmm. they would talk with you as though they own the company and not Bobby Albert. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you can't, you know, you can't buy that stuff. No. And that's where you multiply yourself and empower teams and it's fulfilling, right? You have your purpose. I mean, changing people's lives, right? It's about the culture. It's about the loyalty. And, and obviously you, you had that and, and now you're instilling in other leaders to help build their culture and their companies. Um, uh, what have you seen since you kind of started on this journey with the, with the values driven leadership? I mean, um, uh, how, have, how have you been able to help other leaders in the nation? Well, perhaps one of the, uh, uh, biggest thing is, uh, helping them see how they can work on the business while they're working in the business. It's not either or right. it's kind of like Jim Collins calls it the genius of the end, uh -huh. not the tyranny of the or. And so many, I find so many leaders struggle with this. It's gotta be this or that. 
Do you have a quick tip uh, or just a simple a simple thing of when if I was if I'm working in the business, but I could also try to work on the business at the same time? Do you have any simple nuggets that you might throw out at our audience on how to how to do that? Yes, yeah. The, what I learned and and how we develop this culture is this goes back to 1987 of me seeing my work as a ministry and not a job. Mm. That was a big plus that cult, that ministry, which we end up calling uh, work is worship. It took on, uh, I mean, at first I, I, I was like, okay, Lord, I, I, I declared it. Now what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was teaching, uh, uh, for over 30 years, I, I taught, uh, uh, boys at my church. Uh, mostly it was 12th grade boys. And, um, uh, one day I, whatever, you know, the, what I was teaching, I was thinking adults need to know this. And so I started a weekly Bible study at our company. It, it, it shocked me because I don't know in our company who was a Christian or not, mm -hmm. but it shocked me how many people showed up. And that started, uh, that ministry grew and grew and grew to the point that in our human resource department, uh, we had to add another employee just to manage all the logistics wow. of the ministry we were doing. And we finally figured out not only how to minister to employees, but we learn how to minister to customers and even suppliers mm -hmm. as well. Wow. That's awesome. God is good. And, you know, it just goes back to, I think it is, is key uh, that if the Christians are out there, that there is so much ministry that they can do in the marketplace, right? You don't have to be a missionary or a pastor, but the marketplace is, is you know, God's given you that talent and other leaders out there that talent, and they can use their uh, business as a ministry. So. That's amazing. Um, Bobby, any last, just advice before we go into the last section of our show uh, to all the, the leaders out there, Christian, non-Christian, um, just about your company. And I think you also have a free gift that we're going to be giving away to our audience as well. Uh, yes, it's a, a, a culture assessment tool that I would love to offer guests and let me provide you with the link. It's bobbyalbert.com. And uh, Bobby is spelled B-O-B-B-Y. And the last name is spelled A-L-B-E-R-T.com. And then a slash. And then the word culture checkup. It's one word. Slash culture checkup. And there's 15 uh, questions in there for your audience to go through to do a checkup on their own culture. I'd suggest they even use it with all their employees. They may get amazed at what, <laughs> what their employees think about uh, the leadership. And, um, uh, but the feedback you'll gain from uh, doing, going through that checkup is invaluable. Mm. No, I love that. Thank you so much. Guys, we're going to put a link in our description uh, as well on our channel, on the Brett Snodgrass YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, so check that out on YouTube. So thank you so much, Bobby. Appreciate that. Bobby, uh, I always like to do a special round at the end of each show, and your round is called the Bonus Round with Bobby. I just have four questions for you here and try to keep these, I don't know, under 60 seconds or maybe two minutes, something like that. So okay. um, one of them might be hard to do that. But all right, what is a hidden passion of yours? Do you have a hidden passion? Well, uh, it's a, uh, it's a personal vision, a per on a personal level, uh, is that I want to encourage, uh, Christian business leaders to integrate the Lordship of Jesus Christ into every area of their life. And that is, you know, family, you know, church in the workplace and even in the marketplace. Uh, what I find is so many Christian business leaders, uh, they live their lives in compartments. Mm. And, and I, I find so many, you know, 
they, they know that uh, they have a sacred side of their life, but they think that, you know, it's only when they go to church on Sunday. Yeah. And they, there have been a lack of uh, connection between Sunday and Monday through the rest of the week. And so helping people to see that all God is interested uh, in, in, in a sacred way, their total life, not just when they go to church on Sunday. Mm, I love that. It's awesome. All right. Second one, best book that you've read recently. Well, this may not be the kind of answer you're looking for, but uh, uh, it, it's the Bible. I going back to 1987, I started a uh, I started reading my, you know, having a daily quiet time, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I'm not what I'm about ready to say. I'm not asking you to you know pat me on the back or your audience or congratulate me, but I've never missed a day except one day when I was traveling. Wow. And like I had my quiet time today before this podcast. Do you say that is one of your qualities, one of your gifts is the the gift of discipline too, just because, (laughs) I mean, you seem like you're a very disciplined person because even before this show, you said you've worked out six days a week since think what the 1990s something like that uh 1982 82. 1982. <laughs> yeah i know i'm sick i'm sick i don't miss <laughs> no that's funny yeah. all right i love it no, that's awesome yeah my my wife would tell you that now this is my wife she would tell you i'm the most disciplined pl- person in you know in the world but uh to me the word discipline is doing what you don't want to do yeah today so you can go do what you want to do tomorrow. Mm, That's like my that. definition of discipline. I like that. That's cool. All right. Number three, what would you tell your dad right now if he was sitting beside you? Hey, dad, I love you. And thank you. Awesome. <laughs> love that. All right. Last one. Uh, what talent did God give you? You know, uh, uh, that's kind of a little, uh, tougher, but, uh, it, it, uh, that's a, you know, I, I, I think the, it's the, it's, it's, it's kind of a skill to take things that are very, this, this, because I know we had talked earlier about being a simple guy, it, it's somehow uh, I have this ability to take very complex, whatever it is, an issue or a subject or whatever, and to uh, get it down to some something simple that people can understand. Mm. And I, 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 somehow be able to with other people helping me to be able to communicate it in a way that when people finally hear this very complex issue to it gets down to something simple of course you know i'm trying i gotta understand it myself you know i'm a simple man with a simple mind (laughs) and so uh is uh, I, I think that's a talent or a skill that the Lord's given me uh, to be able to do that, that, uh, uh, that over the years built this culture where people thrive and profit soar. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely agree with that. I think you take complex uh, things, and I think you're a storyteller, kind of like Christ. You know, he used these complex things and made parables, and and I I could see that in you too. Uh, you like to tell stories, and you take those, and and it, and it relates, right? And you tie it together with with your story. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Bobby. I really appreciate you and your humility. Uh, wish you so much success. Uh, if you guys are checking this out, go check out bobbyalbert.com, his website, and check out the link for the culture assessment tool. And appreciate that, man. So God bless you. Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be with you today.
Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below, and I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.